Hi everyone, it's Angela from Clyde Fitty, and today I'm sharing how to make tiny little kawaii faces on polymer clay charms. So to start out, the main tools that I begin with are some dotting tools, and these are for poking the little holes for the eyes to go into, and I'll leave a link to the ones that I use in the description box below. I really like these because they come in lots of different sizes that range from really small to pretty large and a lot of the time I use the medium size one in the middle here but depending on how big my project is I'll adjust the sizing so it's all in proportion. So I make two kinds of charms, one where it's lying flat and the other where it's sitting up. On the flat charms, I like to set it on a little lid so that I can prop it up at an angle and see what I'm doing. I find it a lot easier than looking down at the charm and doing it that way. And then on the charms that aren't flat, I just like to hold it upright and poke the holes. A lot of the time, I try to place the face on the lower third of the charm. So if you imagine it like this, split into three sections, I like to place it on the bottom section so it's not directly in the center or too high up. But it depends on the design, I can't always do that, so I'll place it where it suits. I also made a little chart here so that you can get kind of like a rough idea of how high I generally like to place the eyes. So I try to have something that's not too high and also not too low either. And then the spacing of the eyes is also something that I take into account. So how far apart I want the eyes to be. I try not to have it too far apart or too close together, but just have it so that it's in between those two. Sort of like Goldilocks porridge. So for whichever charm that I'm making, I like to start by poking some really light indents in the clay and this just helps to map out where the eyes are going to go. Then when I'm happy with the placement, I push the ball of the dotting tool straight in and then back out. And how far I push it in is just about to where the ball ends and the stick part starts. Since I showed you on a flat charm, I'll also show you on an upright one, just so that you can see how I do both. Sometimes I just go ahead and poke the holes without the guides, but a lot of the time I end up with the holes being really wonky and then I think that I've ruined the entire charm, but it's actually really easy to fix. I just take some small snakes of the same coloured clay and place that in the holes. And then flatten them down a bit with my dotting tool. And then add in some more clay. I then use a cotton tip or q-tip that's been dipped in some nail polish remover and then just smooth it out so it looks like new. So now for the actual faces, the main colours that I use are Caramel by Fimo and I use this one the most on projects where I want a softer look to make it look more pastel. The other one is a darker one and it's also by Fimo but this one's called Chocolate. And I use this one if I want a brown that's just in between a soft brown and a black so that it's not too light or too harsh looking on the face. And then for things that have a lot of detail in them or where I want the face to stand out a lot against the rest of the colours, I'll use black. And this one is by Primo. And mostly I like to use it on really bright colours and also on Halloween charms.
And also, I find that it's also good to use on designs where there's a lot on it so that it doesn't get lost in the background. And also on red charms too. And then for black or dark charms, I like to use white and this is also by Primo. And I like using this so that it has that nice colour contrast, as you can see here. And I mostly choose the colour of the clay eyes depending on the design itself. And I always make sure that the clay is nicely conditioned and soft, otherwise I find that things just kind of fall apart. So now for my work surface, I usually work on a sheet of glass, but it can be really slippery and it makes it a lot more difficult to roll out thin snakes of clay. So I found that working on a piece of copy paper gives me a little bit more of a rough surface to work on and this makes it a lot more easier. So now the holes have been poked, it's time to roll the eyes. So I just take a small ball of clay and roll it into an even sized snake on the paper. and then cut off two equal sized pieces with my blade. And then roll them into balls. And I tried to make them a little bit bigger than the dotting tool that I used. If the eyes are too big, I find that it won't look that cute but you can just pick them out and make them smaller. If you make it too small, it would just sink into the holes, but if they are, you could just use a needle tool to pick them out and add more clay to it. I try to have a happy medium on the design and not to have the eyes too big on a small charm and also eyes too small on a large charm. So now for the little mouth, I take a small piece of clay and roll one end onto a piece of paper until it's super thin. I then cut off a small piece with my blade. And to curve it into a U shape, I use the other end of my dotting tool, which is basically just a silicon paintbrush, and it's called a blending tool. I just use that along with my finger on each side and push it inwards to curve it into shape. Also just a little tip, this method of rolling is also good for adding thin details onto your charms, so like this little scar on this Frankenstein's monster cupcake that I made. And so now back to making the face, I place the eyes into the holes. I then use my blending tool to pick up the mouth and place it onto the face. So now for the cheeks, I do two different styles. The first is with chalk pastels and the other is with clay. I use the chalk pastels on light coloured charms where I want the cheeks to be more blended or on light pink charms to make it stand out. I made a mix of my own with a light and dark pink. So just using about 50-50 of each to get this colour. And I just shave it into a powder. And if you'd like to see how I do this, I do have a separate tutorial sharing how, which I'll leave a link to in the description box below. I then use a thin paintbrush just to dust it onto the clay. 
and I just do this until it's as dark as I'd like. And then for the clay version, I like to use Pastel Light Pink by Fimo. And I find that this stands out a lot more on darker and brighter coloured charms. And I make these the same way as I make the eyes. And then I just place them on the cheeks. And then flatten them very lightly with my finger. And then the same goes for an upright charm. Another way that I do the eyes is to add them onto baked liquid clay, like on this pizza. I can't really add the eye holes onto these types of charms, so I add the eyes on top after it's been baked. I could add them on when it's still in its liquid form, but I don't really like to do it that way because I find that it just kind of sinks in and it's really messy to work with, especially since the pieces are so small. So instead, I bake the charm so that the surface is hard, and then brush on some liquid clay. and add the face on that way, and then bake the entire project. The faces still might be really tricky to place on since they're so small, so a really handy tip is to pre-bake the eyes and mouth for about 10 minutes just so that it hardens, and then you could place it onto the charm with some liquid clay, and then baking everything fully since polymer clay can be baked multiple times. If you're finding that you place the faces on crooked, a good way to practice is to bake a little clay template with some eye holes already poked in the size that you want. And then just dab on a tiny bit of liquid clay into the holes and where the mouth goes. And then you could just keep practicing getting the hang of rolling the right size eyes and how and where to place on the mouth and cheeks. And then just keep doing this until you feel comfortable to work on your real charms. And also don't worry if things don't look right at first, like if the eyes are too big or the mouth is too wobbly, the more that you work on it, the better you will get. And that's all for this tutorial. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!